All right, today's lesson is the other lesson on volume. Today is going to be some a lot of formulas. And they all there's going to be a common theme today on circles. First, recall the volume of a prism is capital B, which stands for the area of the base shape. So area. times the height or how tall the prism was or is. What is the base of a cylinder? What is the shape? It's a circle. Like that, right? How would I find the area of that circle? Pi r squared, right? So since the area of a circle is pi r squared, and we find the volume of the other stuff is the area of the base shape, and the area of the base shape here is pi r squared. Somebody want to make a guess as to what the formula is for the volume of a cylinder? Pi r squared. That would take the place of this b, right? Because that's the base shape, the area of the base shape, times what? Times the height. Well, you guys are good. Because we found the area of the circle, that's the area of the base shape. And then all we have left is the height. What's that? I'm sorry? You have to be given it. You're not going to figure it out. You have to be given the height. Yeah, you're not going to have to figure that out. So in order to find the volume of a cylinder, what do we need? We need two numbers. That's it. Because the area of a circle is pi r squared. And the volume of anything is the area of the base times the height. So we place the pi r squared, the b with pi r squared to get volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h, which you already told me that because you figured it out. So you're ahead of the game. This formula is the same as that. We just replaced the b with that, pi r squared. So really, isn't about the same thing we've been doing? Yeah, it's just a different formula. You've been doing this. Now we're going to do pi r squared. Remember, pi is a number, right? So to find the volume of any cylinder, all we need is the radius of the circle. We need the height of the cylinder. That's it. I'm sorry. You need me to go back. Okay. So if I want to find the volume of that, have I been given the radius of the circle? Have I been given the height of the cylinder? Yep. So I just plug them in and go. Pi times 0.4.5 squared times 10. Now, if you're, when you punch this into your calculator, I recommend you do it in this order. 4.5 squared. Do that first with your squared key. So 4.5 x squared times pi times 10. Six hundred and thirty five point eight five cubic meters. It's a volume. Three dimensions. That's why it's cubic meters. Yes, sir. You use the pi button. That's correct. You got what? Point what? Point one seven. If you use the pi button, this is what you get for the answer. They're both correct. This is what you get if you use three point one four. Both answers are correct. That's fine. This I mean look, what's the difference between these two? What? Point three two? 32 hundredths? They're only off by 32 hundredths. You add 0.32 to that, this, and you're going to get 636.17. No biggie. 
All right, a cone. Now, let's look at the cone's formula. This is the formula for the volume of cone. It's on, a for on your formula sheet. Look at it. Without the one-third, what is it? It's the cylinder one, isn't it? Well, what is the base shape of a cone? It's a circle. So what's the difference? Instead of being a circle at the bottom, the cone comes to a vertex. And what happens to it? That means you lose two-thirds of the volume. This is the same as the difference between a prism and a pyramid. Remember what we do with the pyramid. We divided it by three, right, at the end? Same thing here, because look, if I extend this down, I end up with a circle down there. That's how much, look how much you're losing off this. That's why with the cone, it's one third times that. Now, I want you, I want to point this out to you. It's easier when you're working with your calculator to do pi r squared h divided by three. It's fewer buttons to push. So you might want to do that instead of, you can multiply by a third. You're going to get the same answer, but then you have to use your fraction key and it's a lot of buttons and I recommend you divide by three. On your formula sheet, you might want to rewrite it as pi r squared h divided by three. So for this specific example, I still, I will just like with the cylinder, I only need two numbers. I need the radius, got it right here, check, and I need the height, check. Okay, so it would be, I don't know, I've figured it out. It would be pi times the ra radius, so that's four, squared times the height of six, divided by three. Don't forget to divide by three. Most common mistake made when you find the volume of a cone is to divide by three, and then you're finding the volume of it if it were a cylinder. 100.48, okay. Let's see, 16 times six is 96 times pi. Yeah, that's about right. I'm, a, I'm, I'm guesstimating, but what'd you get, 100.48? Sounds about right. 100.48 cubic centimeters. Sarah, what'd you get if you used the pi key? 100.53 if you use the pi key. Which I do, because then that's even fewer buttons I have to push. <laughs> but once again, just like with the cylinder, I recommend that you take your number, your radius, square it first, then times pi, times six. Don't forget to divide by three. So, so far, so good, right? Yeah. Two formulas, just like we had Friday. You know, it's essentially the same formula, just when it's a cone, you got to divide by three. Okay. Here comes the crazy stuff. S sphere is really different because it has no flat surface. It has no base. Where's the base of the sphere? It's in the middle, and it's really not a base. It's a circle. It's based upon a circle, right? Because if I take... Well, you can't cut a ball in half. Hey, has anybody ever had those cheese puffs? If you have a cheese puff and you cut it in half and you look at the one circle, you look at the end, the base there is a circle, right? So all of this is based on a circle, which is why when you find the volume of a sphere, how many numbers do I need to be given? Just one, right? I just need to be given the radius. Four-thirds times pi times the radius cubed. The diameter of the planet Mars is approximately 6,800 kilometers. All right. That means the planet Mars, all the way across here, is 6,800 kilometers. What is the volume of Mars? This is how we figure out the volume of the planets. What do I have to do first? Yes, you would. Very good. The first thing, is, this is the volume or the, I'm sorry, it's the radius, the diameter. I want the radius, so I only want half of that. So 68, i got to divide that by 2, and I get 3,400 kilometers. That's the number I need. I need 3,400. So 4 thirds times pi times 3,400 cubed. Now, you may end up with a number in scientific notation on your calculator because 3,400 cubed is huge. times 10 to the 10th power. Okay. 
So I'm going to take this. The first thing I'm going to do is 3,400. Then I use my YX key to the third power, YX3. Yes. Then times pi times 4 thirds. And you get this. 1.65 times 10 to the 11th power. Did you multiply by pi? Did you multiply by 4 thirds? You made a mistake somewhere then. 1.646, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I rounded to 1.65. Four or six. Okay, ready? 3,400. YX key. Because you got to raise it to the third power. This is not a good example. I should use the smaller numbers, but. So YX key three times pi times four thirds. Four fraction key three equals fraction four thirds. Show me. Now, do the 3,400 first. That's where you're. So yx equals times pi times 4 thirds equals. Okay. There you go. You do it, and when you do it in this order, the, cal the calculator doesn't know what you want to do. Okay. Look at this one. Now this one's adding some, putting a couple things together. What do we have there? And a cone. We have a cylinder and a cone. So I'm going to find the volume of the two shapes and put them together. So the volume of the cylinder. So we have a cylinder and we have a cone. The volume of the cylinder is going to be what? Well, my radius is 12. Pi times the radius of 12 squared times, what's the height there? Five meters. To that, I'm going to add the volume of the cone, which is going to be pi times the radius squared, which is 12, times the height of 10 divided by 3, because it's a cone. Because the height of my cone is 10. Yeah. So you did the first part right. You had to recognize there are two se separate shapes there. Now, as I do this in my calculator, I would do 12 squared times pi times 5. Get that number. And I got 226. 2261.95. You're going to get something close to that. I used the pi button. Did you get 2260 point something? I used the pi button. So that's fine. This is using the pi key. I always use the pi key. Then on this side, 12 squared times pi times 10 divided by 3, 1507.96. Now add those two together. Thirty-seven sixty-nine point nine. Thirty-seven sixty-nine point nine.
But that's a complicated example. That's putting two of our three formulas together. Yeah. Right? I mean, you're only off by one because you used the pi key, right? I mean, you got 37.68. That's 1.9. Same difference. Yeah, probably. There are some complex shapes tonight, though. <coughs> a water storage tank is to be shaped as an inverted right cone with a depth of 5 meters. The tank is intended to hold 50 meters, 50 cubic meters of water. What must the diameter of the tank be? All right. So I'm trying to figure out the radius. So I'm going to work backwards. Well, my formula for the cone is pi times the radius squared times the height divided by 3. Well, let's fill in the parts I know. Well, I know what pi is. Still pi. I don't know what the radius is. I know the height is 5 meters divided by 3, and it has to hold 50 cubic meters of water. So I'm working backwards. Hmm? No. Well, I may need to work backwards. What do I have to do first? Well, i got to get rid of this 3. How do I get rid of the 3? Multiply by 3, right, because I'm dividing by 3. Good. That cancels, and I end up with pi times r squared times 5 equals 150. Now what? How about simplifying? Pi times 5. 3.14 times 5. 15.7 times r squared equals 150. So now what? Divide by 15.7. Good. Hmm. Pi times 5. I just simplified. That way I don't have to divide twice. Otherwise I would divide by 5 to get 30, and then I would divide 30 by pi. All right. So r squared now equals 150 divided by 15.7. I'm sorry? 9.554. Sounds right to me. You're right. No, you're right. I told you. How do I get r by itself? What's the opposite of square? Square root. Good. Square root of both sides. Square and the square root cancel. r equals plus or minus what? 3.09. Does the negative, does the radius of negative 0, 3 point, negative 3.09 meters make sense? No. So it's just positive. So we need a radius of 3.09 meters. 3.09 meters. 1 to 12, 458 and 459, 1 to 22 all.